Hello, this is Aaron Saft and the MR Running Pains Podcast. This is episode number 87. Today, I have with me Brian Blanken Beckler. And Brian is a, um, a runner, a coach, um, and a YouTuber. And I thought it would be interesting to kind of sit down and talk to him about YouTube and what uh, made his channel so successful. You'll hear, you'll hear he has you know, tons of views. Uh, he has over 250,000 subscribers. And this is um, a retired uh, math and science teacher. Uh, pretty incredible. But he has some great things to share. So if you're interested in uh, in uh, either upping your game or you know starting a, a YouTube channel, um, Brian's got some great suggestions for you. Going to have tons in the show notes because he had a lot of stuff to share. So uh, check out the show notes for all of the resources uh, that Brian shared in this episode. Uh, it was great to see him. I hadn't seen him since this uh, this summer. We did a running camp together. So, um, Brian, thank you for, for coming over and, and hanging out and doing this podcast with me. And I hope you guys can pull some stuff from it. Brian, how are you today? Doing great. Doing really well, by the way. <laughs> I'm so glad that we get to see each other in person and, and hang out and, and, and talk about uh, your uh, your experiences with YouTube and stuff. So uh, why don't you start with a little introduction of yourself? Okay, I will. My name is Brian Blankenbeckler. Uh, for 30 years or so, I'm either Mr. B or Coach B. And then on my YouTube channel, sometimes I'm Mr. Moo because the name of my channel is Moo Moo Math and Science. Um, I've been an educator my entire life, and I'm recently uh, – I hate to even use this term. Um, I'm not retired, but I am retired and um, – cash my pension check from teaching in Georgia for 30 years, and then now I uh, pursue YouTube, uh, and then I coach a cross-country team, and then I still run. I've been an avid runner since I was 16 years old, so... And that's, uh, you know, what brought us together was uh, the Nike um, Smoky Mountain uh, uh, running camp this summer. Uh, it was where we got to know each other, and you told right. me about your YouTube channel, and, you know, we talked that I had a, a podcast, and... Um, you know, a, uh, a small <laughs> right. YouTube channel myself. So, um, the, uh, but today we want to kind of talk about YouTube and, okay. uh, the platform itself, um, and how people can, can kind of create their own YouTube channel and, and, you know, maybe not find the success you have, but how they can get on their way to perhaps, uh, walking down that Avenue. So, okay. um, let's start with, uh, with YouTube itself. Um, talk about the platform. What um, what is available on YouTube? What what can one do with YouTube? Okay, uh, as you know, in um, it's basically a video sharing platform. Uh, the first thing what I I generally do is my sweet spot is I upload uh, approximately three minute math and science videos. Uh, in terms of science, uh, I taught middle school. And I taught both 6th, 7th, and 8th. And so I have life science videos, earth science videos, and uh, physical. They're, they're kind of basic physics videos. And then I also upload math videos. And I've probably covered every single topic you can. they teach in middle school. And then my wife teaches accelerated pre-calc and geometry. And so we have a lot of those videos. We probably have about every topic in geometry. So um, for me, I, I am what you would call a search channel. And so like if uh, it's kind of like if you need to fix something, uh, you type that in. And so if you need some help with a math topic or a science topic, you type in the topic and, and hopefully I'll appear. And then – uh, you, you know, YouTube, they've tried everything. You can do stories. Uh, right now they have this uh, thing called shorts. Uh, basically, you can express yourself any way you would like to on YouTube. And the, any format that you would like, uh, you're wide open. So I don't know if that answered that, but that's kind of what, what is available. Awesome. Awesome, so. awesome. And so um, I was flabbergasted when you said how many videos you have already done. <laughs> Can you uh, just you know, let the <laughs> folks know how many videos you've done? Uh, I've got approximately 2,500 videos. 2,500 uh, videos. Uh, right, 2,500 videos, well, which uh, I still don't know how I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> and so people get uh, also a feel for the popularity of your channel. How many subscribers do you have? 
Uh, I think I'm around 237,000 around. I try not to check it every day. The <laughs> first big milestone um, and was 100,000 because you get a plaque for that. You get a silver play button. And it's funny because I was in middle school. And when I got to around 80,000, uh, which took around three and a half years, my students started asking me about that because um, – Anyway, middle school kids think that's kind of cool. And so there was a big push to 100,000, and then it's kind of like anything else. Once I got to 100,000, I then jumped to 200,000 within within like nine months, and now uh, I'm on my way to hopefully 300,000. So, And I'm thankful for every single – and this is, is serious – every single subscriber. Right. Um, you know, so we're we're talking about um, creating a YouTube channel. So how did it go from, you know, basically – creating your account to you know to getting this many views can you kind of take us through the process of, of what that looked like okay i i will uh the story was i i was a teacher i taught about 20 plus years my wife who is much smarter than i am said brian why don't you go back and get your master's because i was originally a finance major and i thought about it and i said no i do not want to get my master's because i'm still tied to education originally i was going to do a website so i uh, figured out how to do a website and it got zero traffic. Oh. I mean, when I say no traffic, I'm talking like a <laughs> hundred views a month, <laughs> and it was probably the hardest I've ever worked on anything in my life. Right. But I would. Uh, so then I thought, well, I can make a simple little math video, put it on YouTube, and maybe that'll dr- uh, drive traffic to my website. So I did that for about four months, and then I realized one day that hey, I'm getting a lot of views on YouTube. So uh, I kind of played around with it for a year. And then um, actually about a year and a half, and then uh, I saw a – but I wanted a lot more views. Uh, you know, I was getting maybe maybe 1,000 views a month. And so I saw a Casey Neistat video, and he had mentioned that he uploaded every day. I have a marathon mentality, and I said I'm going to upload a video every single day. And I've done that now for at least four years, and I think I've missed maybe – three or four days and and it's like anything else uh it it, it's a slow build uh and then a couple things how that helped it allowed me to get better uh at my craft and um i just learned a lot from that and the persistence eventually paid off right so um Anyway, I can add some more later, but do you have no, a it, – Absolutely. I was going to say it's, you know, it's the consistency that, you know, that really helps yes. people because it's you – know, you, you have a constant upload. People kind of get used to the, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the upload schedule and, and seeing new videos and such. That's, that's incredible, but please continue. Right. Uh, a, another breakthrough was um, I was not a videographer. Uh, I never did videos. I was not the kind of person who started in, when I was younger and did videos and loved this. I had no experience. I was in my 50s. Uh, I was okay with technology, but uh, I was not as good as a 20-year-old. I had a vision. I wanted them to look kind of cartoonish, kind of fun. And I stumbled upon a, a platform called Powtoons. That's P-O-W-T-O-O-N-S. And it's... Um, it's kind of – it's not that much more difficult than learning PowerPoint. However, you know, you have transitions and you have to figure out because – anyway, it's, it's kind of like learning PowerPoint. And so once I found that, I knew I could upload a science video that was of quality. And once I knew I could upload something of quality, it, I gained confidence and then once you have confidence, uh, I just felt a lot better, and I felt like my videos were of high enough quality that teachers could start showing them in the classroom. So that's kind of what I did. Um, and then my, the math videos are, are simple because math videos, people just want to know how to work the problem, and they're very, very simple, and I can do those with very little editing. So, And I, I like to do a bounce. To be honest with you, I like doing the science videos more than the math, but um, you know, so we kind of go from there. Do you watch um, other YouTubers um, to get ideas or um, or editing techniques or like how has that evolved for you? Uh, yes, um, I, I watch a couple of the science videos. Uh, there's one that's really popular, the Amoeba Sisters, but they they kind of draw everything. Uh, absolutely, um, I like Crash Course, um, so I like their format. Um, there, are, you know, a couple others like that. Um, yeah, I. I 
really, and, and then uh, probably my fa- my favorite podcaster is uh, Seth James Damore. He's actually a running podcast, and I like his enthusiasm. He's like me. He's a grinder. Uh, he never misses, and he's kind of my inspiration. If I'm tired or whatever, I always know. I've never met him. Uh, I always know that Seth is going to be out there grinding and uploading, and so, um, yeah, he's kind of my inspiration. And Casey Neistat. Uh, he's not doing quite as much now, but he, he was also um, – I really value grit and persistence, and so th- those guys have always shown that. So. And you said Seth Demore is he a, a podcast? Or? He he has a running podcast. It's called the Demore Global Running. Uh, it's a great running podcast, and he he won the Pikes Peaks Mar- Marathon, uh, and he just brings great enthusiasm. Awesome. Uh, you can just tell, it, even if you don't like running at all, it makes you kind of want to go out and run. <laughs> so, are there any um, YouTubers, uh, you know, running channels that you follow or? Um, yeah, Seth, I, I watch him every single day. Um, no, I, I mainly, not really. I, I, I watch a lot of races. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of the running folks that seem to show up in my feed are younger. They're like in their 20s, and um, I just don't relate to them quite as much. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> so That's I, fair. I, won't, I won't express my age, but I will hint. <laughs> I, I did retire from 30 years of teaching, and, and I'm sorry. I, uh, I just don't relate to them. No, yeah, it's fine. Um, you know, I mean, uh, a lot of us, um, myself included, have been influenced by a number of YouTube videos, and I right. would say that, like, uh, one of the brands, Solomon, um, yes. has a magnificent channel and does some really great original works. Mm. Um, uh, and the other, the one who does phenomenal is Yang. What's his last name? Billy Yang. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. Every anytime there, it, it's in my feed. I, I watch them. Uh, yeah. They're great. And, and I like another uh, another guy who is just adventure fueled is Ryan Van Duzer. Uh, and what he does is he does a lot of he he ran. Hard Rock, I think the same time you were out okay. running Hard Rock. Okay. Uh, and he mainly does these epic um, bike packing trips. Oh, wow. And his videography is unbelievable. I, I could never do that. Uh, and then I've got to throw out, my son has a channel, although he, he quit uploading as much. It's, called, <laughs> it, it's a really creative name. Drew Blankenbeckler. He went all out for that <laughs> name. <laughs> it, and his is a mountain bike. But uh, he, he can actually make a really good video you know edit everything which i i can't i just use paltoons so yeah that's cool um I, and i guess you know when we look at these these channels and what these folks are doing the the common denominator is that it draws our attention because it's um it's either uh an exotic location right um or you know a beautiful setting um a a, a wonderful event mm-hmm. um so, you know, uh, like if we were to encourage folks, uh, this being a running podcast, right. if we're encouraging runners to start a YouTube channel, um, you know, what do you think would help them find um, more success? Like what what tips could you give them? Okay. Um, as you know, and YouTube is even more, it, it's a crowded space. Yes. And there are a lot of really, really good running, po- I mean, uh, YouTube channels, phenomenal YouTube channels. I, I think if you're starting out, um, find a niche that you're um, that you think you can slide into, or something maybe you're passionate, uh, maybe a, a unique angle. Um, yeah, I, I think you really at first need to find something uh, very niche related, um, you know, and kind of put your own spin on it, and also look at it as a marathon. As opposed to a 5K race because it's going to be – that's where my son struggled a little bit because mountain biking is a very crowded space. And he was getting some momentum, but he wanted the momentum to go more quickly, and he got discouraged, and he, he's kind of stopped uploading. But, yeah, f- find a niche um, for your first 100 videos. Don't expect a lot because you're learning your craft. And then once you get to 100, look at a couple that are doing really well and try to figure out why are they doing well and just replicate those. So uh, let me give you – I'll give you one other example from math, okay? Math is a crowded space. So uh, I started doing square roots, okay? I know it sounds strange, but uh, square roots and numbers because a lot of people in math, uh, they don't want to look it up or they want to know how to do it. And uh, if you – 
put in the square root of many numbers, I'll be the first one. It was a very, very tiny niche. I knew I could fill in that niche. YouTube rewarded me, and, and I get uh, a lot of views on my square root uh, videos. So, so anyway, that's, that would be one yeah. thing I would say. The, we talked about it earlier in the consistency of release. Um, you know, is that something when somebody's starting out that they should also plan on? Now, uh, you chose to you know later on do right. every single day, but it, you know, just like I said with my podcast, it's once a week. You know, it's a it's, right. a, it's a consistent. Um, th- is that going to help folks in the long? Well, run? both yes and no. One of the things that YouTube values is they want a certain quality. And so if you're just uploading something that just looks like you've pulled out your cell phone and you're, you know, there's no, there's very limited editing and it just is not very good, that's not going to help you. But you don't have to go over the top and it be like a Billy Yang movie. (laughs) Uh, You know, you have to find your balance there. And, And if your balance is, you know, if you can only do that, you know, once a week, you just have to be aware it's going to take longer to build an audience if you can do that every single day and still hold a certain quality that you can be proud of then that would i think help you become more successful more quickly so it all depends but yeah youtube does not like just junk (laughs) so and i think i've uploaded a couple of those yeah so yeah um anyway uh the other thing is uh, like aaron has a podcast his podcast is is quality People do not mind listening to audio on YouTube as long as the audio is of quality and it's interesting and you can put something in the background. The key is, is if you listen to his podcast, it's quality. He's put time into it. He has very interesting guests. And a lot of times people like to have YouTube running in the background while they're working and listening to it. So that can be your audience. Uh, you know, um, The other thing, it took me a long time to learn this. The audio is equally or maybe more important than the video. So uh, you have to really balance the two. So uh, so I guess, Aaron, that's what you've done. You've probably uploaded some of your podcasts. Yeah. And so do yeah. they do okay? Yeah, they do. Um, and that's, you know, mine automatically uploads to right. YouTube. So it goes there as a listening platform. Right. Yep. Um, and that's, you know, I mean, I try to do some some little, you know, self-help videos for, right. for running on there. Um, you know, mine are not glorious. I, you know, right. I'm not a, a huge editor, nor do I have a lot of extra time to, to do that. Right. It's not my, my main, but it's more as just a help to, to other runners. But right. um, that said, um, when we talk about like equipment, you know, you okay. talked about like the importance of having quality, quality, quality audio, right. um, especially, you know, uh, recording video and such. What are some things some people can expect that they were going to need to purchase and what kind of budget are they looking at? Okay. Um, if you're going to do video, uh, you know, you can you can do some with GoPro. Mm-hmm. So you're going to need at least a decent GoPro. Uh, if you Again, if you're going to do video, you're going to have to get a good video camera, okay? Uh, you've got to have something to edit in. So, you know, camera-wise – Close to probably a thousand GoPros aren't that much, right. you know, maybe four or five hundred dollars. Yep. You need a decent mic, but you can any more mics are pretty good. You can get those for like three or four hundred dollars. Um, I, I use the um, what, what is it? The it's the I think the Yeti Blue Snowball or something like that. I will say this: I run it through Audacity, which is a great. It's a free tool that okay. you can use, and, and you can kind of edit in this. Uh, you have this Zoom recorder. Mm-hmm. Uh, you probably need something like that. Um, but really, if you really wanted to start, you could probably go with a really good iPhone, uh, some type of um, phone camera at first, some decent edit software, edit that, make sure that the quality, you may want to get a lapel mic or something like that. But really, you could probably get in and get started for 800 to to 1000 $1,000. And then, and then as you get a little revenue, keep you know adding better and better and better yeah. stuff. So, right on. Uh, I I actually uh, the great thing about Powtoons, I think it's it's really not that much. It's only like maybe forty dollars a month, and in it I have a lot of B roll uh, B roll uh, video in it, and and I can edit that. And so I don't film very much. I do it all through Powtoons, and so it's a, it's a subscription. And so um, that's a you know that's only what. 
is probably like uh, $600 a year, which is a bargain. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So. Right on. Okay. Um, so, and now you had mentioned revenue. So right. can you walk us down that avenue? How does that okay. look and work? A, a lot of people, uh, you know, there's a lot of ways to make money on YouTube. I'll talk how I do it predominantly. Uh, YouTube is incredibly generous with their revenue. They share it 60-40. So they keep 60% and then I get 40% and they pay you per thousand views. And then that is based on the ads. It all varies. And so uh, depending on what um, area you're in, it will do, it will vary. Like if you're in finance, you're going to get more per thousand views than say something like a square root video. Uh, and so uh, it's it's all based on that. Uh, also, you can sell merch. Uh, you can do Patreon. Uh, you can do if you do a streaming thing. There's um, you can um, they when people who are watching your video they can give you tips. So there's like seven or eight, but I predominantly do um, – I sell a little bit of merch, and I mainly do it off the AdSense revenue. So, mm-hmm. and, and I think they're incredibly generous with the 60-40 split. Yeah, so. right on. Um, live video is also um, something that uh, a lot of, I think, podcast yes. you know, listeners and watchers are kind of getting used to because um, multiple platforms are recording the video mm-hmm. right. um, and, and putting that on there. Um, and I imagine that's going to help as well generate revenue and, and create viewers and such, yeah? Yeah, absolutely, and and you can monetize that. Like I say, it's mainly like a tip thing, or they can uh, buy certain emoji, you know, certain things in, in there. I, I don't do any live just because I've kind of have my niche, and it, it's been successful, and there's a lot of science topics I haven't gone over, so that's kind of what – that's where I focus my energy, so – does there um, is there a subscription to YouTube? Um, does does one have to pay anything? Uh, to- you do not have to pay. You know, you do have to uh, sit through the ads. If you want to uh, get rid of the ads, you can go to what it's called their premiere. I think it's nine dollars a month, something like that, and that way you don't see any ads. Um, and if you hate ads, you can do that. Otherwise, all you have to do is um, you know watch an ad here or there. And so. and so on your side of things as well, there's no no cost on the creator side? Uh, no, none at all. Okay, I, I will say this. In, in order to monetize, they have a couple of uh, hoops you have to jump over now. When I started, you could start monetizing once you got into the partner program. You apply to the partner program. But now I think you have to have uh, a 1,000 subscribers and a set amount of watch time. It's not an incredible bar. Uh, and so once you reach that, then you apply for monetization and then you get to monetize. And so, um, again, it, it's, I, I think they're fairly generous there. Yeah. You know, I think they, they just wanted to eliminate a lot of people. They were starting a YouTube channel. They would monetize. And then after six months, they would say, no, I can't do this. So let's do something else. That's fair. And so, you know, is, is there any support on the YouTube side of things? Uh, uh no. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me tell you. Okay. You're dealing with YouTube and Google. They're amazing, large companies. Uh, when I was at uh, uh, 2,500 subs, uh, I, didn't, I could not email them directly and get back. They kind of had some help, but at first, you just have to figure out a lot of the stuff on your own. Uh, that's just part of the learning curve. And so, you know, they have – Places where you can go and on YouTube ask things and help there, but at first you're kind of on your own. It, it's I, I guess in the podcast world, kind of the same yeah. thing. If you have a question, figure it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, once you get to a certain point, um, you can apply, and, and they have um, kind of like a person at YouTube that will reach out to you every couple of weeks and will give you some points and tips. And I've recently, and and I'm incredibly thankful. Thank you, YouTube, so much. Uh, I have a person who kind of advises me and gives me some ideas on what I can do to help my channel grow. And and it's been incredibly um, helpful. And and really, uh, I I can't tell you how really I think uh, YouTube, they really want to help their creators. It's just that there's so many creators that, um, you know, they're kind of limited. But they've been been great to me. So. Is there any um, outside resources that you relied on or know of that can help people that are trying to just get going so that they understand perhaps, um, you know, editing or uploading um, 
didn't hear that. Um, right. Yes, I, I listened to a, a, a couple of podcasts. Um, what I think this would be really helpful in the show notes, yeah. uh, and I would listen to them. Um, off the top of my head, there was one. It was uh, video creators. Uh, and I'll give you about three podcasts that I would listen to. One is is pretty big. The other were two smaller people. Okay. Uh, and I just listened to them, and they gave me a lot of advice and encouragement and a tip here or there. There's like three or four that I've listened to enough that I, we'll put the links in there. I'm sorry I can't come up with their names okay. right off the top of my head. Sure. Um, we'll get into that. I know one for sure was uh, video creators. Okay. Um, and as I would run, I would listen to those and just try to pick up a tip here or there. Okay. All right. So absolutely, yeah. So as as uh, as as Coach B here gets those to us, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, as soon as we'll, we finish here, <laughs> we'll we'll add those into the show notes, uh, along with other things that he has mentioned thus far. I'll put all of that in the show notes. Um, so um, we've uh, we've kind of talked about um, the uh, you know setting this up, building it. Um, anything that you can suggest for growth. Um, would you have any tips for for folks aside from like the uh, being consistent and putting out you know obviously um, good content quality content? Um, is there any um, any ways that you know of um, to to get your your channel out there? Did you use social okay. media or anything in that regard? Okay, let me back up to this. I will say this. I, I just pulled them up. One is video creators. It's called Next Level YouTube Tactics. I listen to that. There's a um, free kind of download whatever but tube buddy uh is helpful and it's a really really helpful tube called tube buddy and then um the other this was i, I really really like this guy it's called youtube creators hub with dusty porter uh, and he's a, he's a little bit smaller and he's just a grinder also and so between those three you'll you'll learn a ton what was a, t- that, a ton uh youtube the dusty porter YouTube, uh, it, it? it's called youtube creators hub thank you yeah so those are the three okay so. got it okay um social media okay here's what i do okay one remember when i began i'm in my mid uh well, i guess my, my mid 50s, maybe a little bit younger. So, uh, like everyone else, I have a Facebook account, but I, I did not do much at all. So basically, here's was here's kind of my strategy, and, and I'm not great with social media. So with, after every single video, I had a Facebook account, and uploaded the Facebook account. I have a Twitter account, I upload it there, and then I do Pinterest because there's a lot there seems to be a lot of educators on Pinterest. Other than that, that's kind of all I did. Okay. So, um and basically YouTube um just took care of me there, you know. So, but if you're great with social media or if you already have a social big social media presence, then you're way ahead of where I was. I think that was another reason why my growth was slow because I didn't have a big I mean nobody knew who I was. At all. Did you still maintain the website? Uh, yes, it is there. I call it the world's ugliest website. <laughs> <laughs> it is called Moo Moo Math. Uh, I'm embarrassed. Imbe- <laughs> it is ugly. Uh, and so, yes. Now, that is a good point because I do think uh, what I would do is every single video, I would put it on my website. And I think that helped, that at least gave me some presence because, uh, you know, if you know anything about SEO, uh, as they would say, it gave me some link juice, mm-hmm. as they say. And then I had a, I have a second uh, website. I'm like Aaron. We hustle all the time, <laughs> and it's called Moo Moo Math and Science, and uh, it's not quite as ugly. <laughs> and then I would put some of my stuff there. So that was two websites that at least I had a link back to my video. And uh, I, I only have anecdotal evidence, but I think it did help. Uh, you know, and it drove a little bit of traffic to those websites. Sure, uh, I think Moo Moo Math and Science, the, the Moo Moo Math dot com. Uh, I think it makes uh, no, I don't think. I look it up. It makes uh, uh, less than twenty dollars. You know, you couldn't buy. You could uh, anyway at Starbucks. You could get maybe three cups of coffee <laughs> 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 with what it does in revenue sure. because their prices have gone up. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, if we talk about um, analytics for a moment, right? Um, the um, you know I, I don't know if uh, since this is a Google, can you use Google Analytics in any way for this, or does uh, YouTube have a really good dashboard? Oh, there? YouTube! Every 
possible thing you could think of is in there. Uh, like, for instance, uh, my YouTube coach, uh, she wanted me to go in and start looking at my thumbnails. And, and we'll get to thumbnails in just a second. Okay. Thumbnails are very important. And so you, there's literally – I can go in analytics. I can rank by thumbnail, by percent, which one gets clicked on, and they go to the video more so than the other, which is phenomenal because that way I can look at the um, thumbnails that, are, that, have the, that has the highest click rate. And then I can kind of look at it and see, okay, what colors are working, uh, what design is working, and then just kind of mimic that. Mm. But basically, their analytics are unbelievable. Okay. You know, so anything you could think of, it's in there. It, it there is a bit of a learning curve, and I don't spend a ton of time in there. But I, I have three or four things that um, I, I kind of look at, and yes. Uh, you know, my vanity is I, I do – I try not to obsess over this, but I try to look at my monthly view count. <laughs> and sorry, I'm just a human. <laughs> I like to see if it's going up or down. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, Great. Um, well, uh, you know, you touched on uh, thumbnails. Let's expound on that. Okay. Thumbnails are really important because that um, has to catch the viewer's – attention quickly and it and it's kind of your calling card it's kind of like you know when you go into a restaurant or a store they have what, what like a couple minutes to kind of set the tone and what you think of the store and if you think it's of quality and so that's kind of where you are on your thumbnails and so i i am not a thumbnail expert but i did find a program that is life-saving called canva c-a-n-v-a in my opinion, one of the if you're a non um, someone who cannot do Photoshop very well or you don't do Adobe products well, it can make you look really professional and it's unbelievably easy. And, and it's about a dollar a thumbnail. And so I use Canva, and then um, so you know you you have to have a decent thumbnail. Gotcha. So okay, sweet. I just brought up uh, probably my most popular um, YouTube videos. Right. Um, I want to th- <laughs> just take a moment and thank uh, the Western States Endurance Run. Um, they tweeted my video. Right. Um, because I used um, a buff to create an ice bandana. Okay. And obviously, out there, that's that's huge. Right. So, um, you know, this video for me has over a thousand hits, <laughs> which, uh, you know, like I said, again, you know, it was it was, uh, and that's that brought attention to my my channel. But, right. um, you know, it's um, it's really uh, creating content that's going to be relevant and and helpful. Um, right. And, and that that's a perfect example of when you're getting started because that's something it's very niche. Uh, if you do a search for ice bandanas, there's not going to be a lot on YouTube. Right. Uh, you're going to rank high on that. Yep. It gives you some confidence. That, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, just just really try to think through what would be something that's helpful for runners, that's very very niche, mm-hmm. that a big channel will not cover. Right. And, and when you can do that, slide on in, yep. do the video, yep. and and you'll get views. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I said. Square root of 20. <laughs> but if you go to that, this is scary. Sometimes they'll get up to like 25,000 views. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> on square root video. But you know what? If you need to know the square root of a number, yeah, it's there. important. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah no, it's um, – you know, I, I, I see and hear a lot of shoe reviews. Uh, Correct. You know, for runners. Um, but what, what, I, what I would express to people and what one of my most popular is – I used a shoe company that it's it's small, a small right. brand, a lesser mm-hmm. known, because then it's like you know oh, I've heard of this brand, like let me check out if anybody's done a review on it. Right. Everybody's doing the big companies, the Hoka's, the Brooks, mm-hmm. the Altra, like everybody's right. seen that. So I did one on Enda, E N D A. It's a Kenyan brand. They only had two shoes, and right. I did the lightweight trainer, and I had I had you know probably more questions on that video than anything else, any yeah. other video I've done because. Everybody was interested because everybody like they're starting to know the brand, but they don't know the shoe, and they want right. to learn more about it. So, you know, if I were to encourage people, if you're thinking about doing shoe reviews and such, don't do the majors. Like everybody's doing the majors. Oh. It's you know, like like you said, find the niche, find what people aren't 
checking out. I mean, it's got to be obviously something that you want to try. Like, don't right. <laughs> don't go out there and, and get something <laughs> that you're going to absolutely hate and just you know massacre. But right, um, yeah, it's you know like again, if you have ideas um, for uh, for you know doing a YouTube video. You know, like Brian said, make sure that it's something that's going to be relevant uh, that people are going to look for um, and need and want. So. Right. Uh, the this program called Tube Buddy. Okay, they have a free version, and then you know, if you want more, uh, they have a feature where you can put in kind of your topic, and and it'll give you kind of like a rating score. Okay, uh, it's fairly accurate. I know if I put in my topic and it it, it shows me an excellent. Then I, I have a very good chance of of uh, ranking pretty well for that. Yeah, but that's a great idea, and that's a pretty simple way to do this. Yeah. Especially when you're starting, you got to find something that not every single person is doing. Sure, right. Yeah. And, and that's a great point because she reviews put in something with, uh, oh yes, anything that it's just. Hundreds yeah. and hundreds, right. and the scary thing is, a lot of them are really good. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. No, totally. And I, like, I would say probably one of the important things would be to research it ahead of time, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're going right. to do, if you're thinking of creating a, a, a channel, and let's just say we made it specifically for shoe reviews, right? You know, start doing some research. What's out there? What are they doing? What can Correct. you take for that? What can you do? Like, what do you like? What's your strength? Like, mm-hmm. what are you going to bring to it? How are you going to be different? Like, how are you going to diversify from some of the stuff that's already out there? So, right. you know. Uh, that, that's a great point because I actually um, – I, I was coached to look at a couple of the really successful science uh, channels. And, like, for instance, one is Crash Course and kind of see a little bit what they're doing, um, what their audience likes. Uh, you know, are there areas where maybe their audience would like this better? So yeah, I I that, that's I, I look at I, I mean I have great respect for the channel, and so I go and look and kind of uh, say okay they're doing this maybe I can do this and or do something else. So. Yeah, right on. Um, I, I know some of my uh, friends that are, are YouTubing are actually taking some some courses, mm-hmm. um, you know, in video editing specifically. I think that's probably one of the most yes. useful things that somebody could do most likely. Um, do you know of any um, good companies or, um, you know, again, good resources that people might look into? And if not, that's fine. <laughs> no, in terms of editing, my son uh, edits in Premiere Pro. Okay. Um, I think if if you really want to go high in video and just every top videographer, YouTuber, everyone else uses Premiere Pro. Uh, the problem is the learning curve is fairly steep. Uh, but if you really want to get that, I mean, it's it, it's a great skill. And then y- there's tons of resources to, to so you can learn Premiere Pro. And that's the YouTube editing surface. Um, yeah, that- you know, that's that's I think that's an Adobe product. That's Adobe. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, and okay. um, it's just it it's, seems to be the go to uh, platform okay. that everyone does. Gotcha. There, you know, there are others. <laughs> uh, sometimes, believe it or not, I still edit some of my videos in iMovie. It works oh, for yeah. me. It's a, it's simple, yeah. yep. it's easy, but uh, again, Premiere Pro seems to be where yeah. the, the I, really, really I do, top people. I do my use. editing in uh, GarageBand. <laughs> 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 yeah. but here again, so. um, uh, you know, jump in and, and don't be intimidated. Uh, iMovie simple, mm-hmm. simple, simple. Yep. Garage, that's probably yep. pretty easy. It, yeah. it's straightforward. Don't let that bog you down. Get, yep. I'm telling you, get a hundred videos up, and then at the end of that evaluate and say do i need to go to another level in terms of doing my editing right and if not keep grinding yeah. but y- you know i i think a hundred is, is a good number it may seem daunting but um that's i'm sorry that's just your reality yeah well and you, and, know. you know they should expect just as i did with podcasting it's a steep learning curve right you know from the get-go you're putting yourself in an uncomfort zone because you know Correct. a lot of us don't have this kind of background maybe you do but like right. those of us that don't when you know up front it's just going to take a lot to get going i like if I listen to my, you know, first few podcasts to where oh. I've come now, you know, it's it's a vast difference. So if you give yourself that time, allow yourself that improvement, um, you know, be critical of yourself. Like others are definitely going to be critical oh, yeah. of you. Oh yeah, so. um, some of the comments, but my, you know, I probably deserved these comments. One comment has always stood out. I've always thought it's the funniest thing. Uh, it was uh, one of my videos. It said, "Dude." Sounds like you swallowed your microphone. 
<laughs> and I was no. like, uh, you know what? It really does. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. um, my first couple, I, and I did not heed the advice of my son, and my audio was awful. I mean, awful. And so, um, yeah, you know, and but that's how you learn. It is. You know, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. No, and, uh, you know, I, I think to that point, you know, right. you have to expect negative comments to come with this. Yeah. And that's part of it. There's people out there that are going to, you know, be negative and say things. And, you know, you have to just be able to dust that off. Yeah. It's- I, I, I will uh, – I, I do have a lot of experience here you, with 2,500 videos, and it took me – in fact, I teach this to all of my students. If any of my students are listening, they will know what I'm going to say. <laughs> I have one line. I never – at first, I was an inexperienced little rookie, and I would try to have some equally snide comment back, <laughs> and then I found out that's ridiculous. So here's my comment. I always put – Thanks for the feedback. <laughs> end of story. That's all I put. Thanks for the feedback. Yep. That's, that's <laughs> and, you, yeah. and, and it puts an end to it that. Yep. And the scary thing is sometimes their feedback is helpful. Yeah. It's just put in a rude way. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's just you just have to be prepared for that. Yes. You know? And so you know, that's a that's a great <laughs> great point. Is just expect the uh, expect the worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then laugh at it later. And then laugh at it later. <laughs> yeah. It's. I, at first, it, it does. It bites. You know, like yeah. you know, like you, your first few negatives are, are definitely going to bite, um, but you will grow from it, and that's yeah. that's the especially when you think you've uploaded something so good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then I think I've also had worst video ever on YouTube, <laughs> dude. I thought you were a science teacher. You suck. <laughs> it's tough when you have middle schoolers that are yeah. that are critiquing your videos. Yeah, I, I thought you knew your science. You need a new job uh, but then always thanks for the feedback yeah, thanks for the feedback <laughs> that's right <laughs> i need feedback from a 12 year old <laughs> yeah right yeah don't yeah don't don't try to counteract or or no you know, or or uh re- rebuke <laughs> <laughs> absolutely don't go down that road that's for sure um what else uh, should we talk about um i guess um your your kindness your kindness shorts uh, okay um Within uh, YouTube, let me back up. Uh, once I started getting uh, a lot of views, and I, I am a lifelong public school teacher, I um, really want all children to be successful. And at my middle school, and I think if you talk to any middle school teachers, middle school students are insecure, and really all students, and even adults, and a lot of times they lash out, and they're just really, really mean to one another. And so um, – I wanted to try to make some kind of impact, and I went to lunch with one of my friends, and he says, oh, D- Brian, do you have an outro to all your videos? And I would say, yes, I always say this. I always say, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. And he said, why don't you try to have some type of message at the end? So I went back, and I really thought about it. I thought about it. I want to do some of the kindness. I actually talked to my students, and I said, help me come up with uh, a quick thing at the end on kindness. And uh, after a couple of days, one of my students came up and said, Mr. B, it should be kindness multiplies kindness because it, it ki- multiplies is math-related. And so I like that, and so I, I end all my videos with kindness multiplies kindness, be kind to someone today. And then with the shorts, uh, I, I do 60-second um, YouTube shorts, and they're very kind of raw. That's kind of a little bit what the idea with a short is. It's supposed to be kind of like spur of the moment. You get your phone and whatever's on your mind, and then I talk about uh, examples of being kind um, – you know, like for instance, I was watching a show with Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning was telling this story. This is Peyton Manning, Hall of Famer, and he was saying how uh, he was talking to Eli on his show, and he was saying how uh, one game he was really there was a bad call, and he went over and just yelled at the ref. He was incredibly rude to him, and he said the next morning he felt uh, felt guilty, and he contacted the league office to get his address so he could write him a letter of apology. And so that would be an example. I'm thinking Peyton Manning, Hall of Famer. This is just a referee, but he felt that the right thing to be to do would be to apologize. And so, and right now I'm doing a 10 day kindness challenge, and I kind of make suggestions on how to be kind each day. So it's kind of my passion project. Um, and those videos are not monetized, and so I'm just kind of giving that out there just to uh, my tiny little contribution to make the world a better place. So, and, and sometimes I'm not kind. Sometimes I'm rude. Also, <laughs> I'm perfect. <laughs> I have not got. I, I do not have this figured out completely. <laughs> well, 
Well, I mean, we certainly appreciate you sharing all that knowledge because whether you're looking to do YouTube or uh, create your own podcast or just, uh, you know, be a little bit more, um, I guess, active on your social media channel. Right. You know, we've got a lot of people that are are trying to, um, you know, be athletes and, you know, get themselves out there. Right. Uh, you can take a lot of this stuff and apply it to any one of those avenues. It's, you know, right. it's, we've, uh, both of us, not that I have as successful, successful as a, uh, a, a channel or a podcast, um, but it's, you know, it's just the, the fact that you have to do it with passion. You have right, to do absolutely. It, you know, with what you're enjoying, uh, you feel like you're putting content out there that's going to make a difference, just like right. you just said with right. the kindness. Um, let me follow up with that. Uh, as you can tell, I'm gonna, I've got to eventually meet this person, <laughs> Seth James Demore. Right. Okay, I, I think you're having tremendous podcasts, and I, I listen to it driving up to your house. Your podcast is good. It's high quality. Thanks. It's always interesting. Okay. He started five years ago, and the first three years, he just thought he would do vlogs, okay? He uploaded every single day for three years, and I go back and look at some of those videos, and some of them will literally have 26 views on them. Yeah. But he kept uh, – but I think why he began, eventually became popular, he pivoted to running because he was a great runner. He was kind of like right below the professional. He won the Pikes Peak Marathon was that he brings so much passion and energy, and that's contagious. And people can see if you're passionate about it or if you're just faking it and doing it to try to do something. Sure. And so I think that's very true. And, and when I listen to Aaron's podcast, you can tell he's very knowledgeable and very passionate about running, and he wants his audience to learn something. So, uh, yeah, that would be key. Uh, if you don't get real excited about it, I, I, am, I like to say I'm an uh, athletic nerd, uh, <laughs> and I do love teaching science. Uh, uh, there's certain things that uh, I just think are very interesting. So, Absolutely. And the more you learn about uh, life and life, well, really everything, uh, it, it just really is fascinating to me. So. I think that's a, a great place to wrap up. Um, okay. I am. Uh, I have pulled stuff away from here. I hope you guys did. Um, Brian, it was amazing talk. I'm going to put a ton of show notes. Okay. Uh, those will be everything that we discussed is going to be in the show notes. Uh, your website, your channel, um, you know, all of the different um, podcasts and YouTube channels that, and different, um, you know, little. Um, I don't know if we call them software additions. Uh, they, right. A couple of things have been really, really yeah, helpful for me all along. Awesome. We'll, so. we'll put those all in there. Um, thanks for, for coming by, man. It's so good to see you. Um, Thank you. It's been, it's been great chatting and catching up. Okay, and I'll end with this. Remember, kindness multiplies kindness. Well, again, thank you, Brian. Uh, it, was, <laughs> it was great to, to catch up. Uh, we had such a great day, and, uh, man, it was it was really cool hearing a lot of that. Um, I took a lot away from it, and you know, we had further conversations. So, um, really gave me some great ideas. So, thank you. Um, everything here uh, is is going on, uh, going accordingly. We're uh, we're done with the the cross country season now. Uh, middle school cross country is done for me. Uh, Brian still has two more weeks, but um, yeah, we are all set here. Uh, the kids did amazing. Um, both teams uh, won the conference championships. Uh, they're just amazing, uh, and we we finished off the season with a unofficial state meet, and uh, both boys and girls came in second, which were awesome. Very proud of those kids. So uh, done with the cross country season. Um, one less thing, uh, which means that I am turning my attention now towards Hellbender. A um, lot to get done for the uh, November first. Uh, registration opening so um, we'll be making a number of updates to ultra sign up and to the website uh, so a lot of information will be getting update here within the next two weeks as the uh, um, the opening of registration um, is is coming upon us um, we have uh, the hellbender podcast coming out with a new episode this weekend um, our friend craig marshall from uh, the star uh, um, uh, i'm sorry the uh from South Carolina, he is uh, a part of the. Um, I think it's the. <laughs> I forget which club he's in. Rock City? No, not Rock City. Rock Hill. Rock Hill Striders. There we go. <laughs> Took me a second. I'm sorry. Uh, Rock Hill Striders. He is a huge volunteer for us at Hellbender. Uh, so that episode will be about volunteering, and uh, we are going to need a slew of volunteers. So if you're interested, uh, we will be getting that up on Ultra Sign Up as well, so people can sign up for volunteer opportunities. Um, so very cool stuff. 
So head on over there, subscribe to that podcast, give it a listen, uh, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll we'll be going over a lot of stuff that will help folks with the uh, the Hellbender um, race. Um, super excited for that. Um, the newsletter came out, so October newsletter is out. Um, and if you haven't subscribed, you can go to my um, my website, and that is mrrunningpains.com. Uh, under the Connect With Me page, uh, you'll find all of the old um, newsletters and podcasts are archived on the website. So check that out. Uh, lots of stuff in this October one since I missed September, as I talked about last week. Um, just full of stuff. But yeah, please subscribe. Try to get that out on a monthly basis. Um, and um, thank you, uh, Austin Elder. Man, um, he uh, he upped his Patreon support. I sincerely appreciate that, Austin. Thank you for, for listening and supporting. Uh, if you feel that you can support the podcast financially, the Patreon link is in the show notes as well as on my website. Of course, that is supremely and most appreciated. Um, but uh, not to say that if you just leave a review or share the podcast, it's extremely helpful and very appreciated as well. Um, so thank you, guys. Other than that, um, not much to report. Uh, fill him back up on the uh, athlete front for coaching. So um, if you are interested in having a conversation about coaching, please do reach out because uh, I am filling back up, um, which is, is great. Thank you guys for reaching out. And I hope everybody's training uh, in fall is going great. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you can contact me through my website, which once again is mrrunningpains.com. And all of my contacts, social medias, uh, Strava, all that information is in the show notes. If you want to give me a follow or ask questions on any of those platforms, more than welcome to do so. Thank you guys for listening, and until next time, keep running.